Hi, so we are going to learn Python and my course is uh, beginning with Python. It is really very easy to understand, so you don't have to worry at all. So actually it is a high level programming language. It is easier for beginners to read and grasp. So that's why it is also known as first programming language. So it is also known as first programming language. Furthermore, being generally a uh, purpose programming language, Python is quite versatile for different sorts of projects. We will we'll come to know that how we are going to make use of various projects like by using say database in the back end or maybe the tkinter for the GUI programming or maybe for data analytics in uh, artificial intelligence or uh, machine learning or maybe NLP natural language processing etc. Python programming is uh, actually uh, founders, founder of this Python programming language is Guido Van Rissum. And uh, it is non-profit Python software foundation. Uh, the Python is administered by the non-profit Python software foundation. So we will understand how to start with the Python now. I'm going to type here idle. And this idle is uh, integrated development learning environment. And uh, obviously, it would get started. We can see here the idle has been started. And uh, you can see this, the various uh, tabs file to create a new file edit if you want to copy paste find shell if you want to open the shell we are going to open that same we are going to debug the code various options for configuring maybe window and finally help so we are going to write down this is something like the idle the shell prompt and at this moment we are going to work on python 3.7.3 and uh, it has been used right now on Windows. It can be used on uh, Linux also. It is not at all difficult. And this is nothing but the prompt. So this is my Python prompt. So if I say here, if I say that uh, I want to write down something, so I'm going to write down here print. Hello. <coughs> this first statement in Python. And bracket complete it would be printed so in this manner this is so easy and so understandable that you can print it very easily on the shell so we have reached onto the shell we came to know now how to write down a, a first statement that is a print we can say that if suppose I am saying that a equal to 10 the value of a is 10 if I want to say so I and I want to print the value of a it would be a it would be 10 okay so in this manner, it is really very much possible and easier to start with Python. This is, we are working on shell. As I told you, this is for Python. For beginners, so if you don't know programming at all, it is really very easy to understand. So you don't have to worry at all. And uh, I would be there to help you out. Thank you very much. Hi, so we have talked about how to start with the Python. What is Python, how uh, it is, supported by Python Free Software Foundation and who is the founder of Python. So we are going to talk about how to start with idle. We have talked about that too, but then we are going to have a look again with the same. So you can see here there is a idle interpreter. This is known as idle. That is, if I write it down over here, integrated development, learning environment so this is something like python idle and i am going to get this whenever i am going to click on idle uh, please keep it in mind if you want to go to command prompt and then you want to give the idle or python then also it's possible here you'll have to type it down python okay what would happen here also you can get the python prompt obviously i'll have to give it i have told you in the last lecture that we'll have to give it in the double quotes so we can give this but how will it come okay so we have to go to the environment variables okay whatever the path is there for the python we have to check that so how will you check that file Save as, and then you can get the path over here. 
can you see the path over here just copy it by pressing control c and go to the environment variables and give the path under this as under edit and you can see in my case it is already there can you see that so i'll not give it again but you'll have to give it in the same manner under system variables you can go to python sorry path then edit and add a path over here and you can give the path and then it will be it will work so if i want to give the path now i'm going to give it over here i'm going to say okay i'm going to click on okay i'm going to click on okay i'm going to click on okay and then i'll see here whenever i press command i can see here python working so in this manner you can get the python over here also fine but right now we are going to concentrate on idle so what is it all about generally when we talk about this python actually uh, python shell waits for the input command from the user as soon as the user enters the command it executes it and displays the result so how it happened in the same manner so if i'm going to type it down here print this is my first program of python we can say so hello world if suppose i do that hello world would be printed so to open the python shell on windows open the command prompt i told you that as you can see a python prompt you can see it in the triple greater than sign so to access the python shell uh, open the terminal of your operating system so how are you going to open it suppose if you want to open a new file you are going to type it down over here this here you are going to type down the number of lines if suppose your program contains number of lines okay obviously it will take some time to write down number of lines for writing down the program so here i can write it down print hello and then i am going to run it so at the time of running it is going to ask me to save the program so i'll have to save the program by some name so i'll get, give say first pi automatically it is going to get take, take the extension as dot pi so here it would be save and then the program we can see here under first pi dot pi we can see it over here somewhere on the in the directory so we'll just try to see the same you can see here first pi and the pi file okay so always keep it in mind for any file Whenever you are going to create in Python, it would have the type as py file. So there are all my type py files that that is they are my Python files. Okay. So it is it is in this manner is really very easy to understand. So we understood today uh, in this particular session in this particular tutorial that how to give the command on the command prompt, how to make the changes in the environment variables so that we can work on python from the command prompt and even i told you today how to open the file okay how to type down one the the line of your code okay and save it and run it that's all for today in this tutorial thank you hi so we are used to python now we are going to click on idle we are going to open it okay and uh, obviously now i'm going to tell you about the variables and the data types and uh, maybe the how to use them etc so it is really very easy don't get afraid it is really very easy so it is something like say uh, in your mathematics also you have say the value as m the value of m is 10 so how am i, how am I going to write it down in a programming language i'm going to write it down something like this m equal to 10 as simple as that now i want to find it out that what is the data type of m so what is the data type means what suppose if i am going to write down type m it is going to give me class int the meaning is this is the data type okay so this data type is something like when you talk about the data type the data is stored of integers and integers are nothing but 
the numbers which are stored in that particular variable m. In the same manner, if I write it down here, n equal to 34. And after that, if I write it down, type n, it is going to give me int. But if suppose after some time, if I write it down, p equal to 90.6, sorry, 90.8, okay? Then if I write down type p, it would be give it would be giving me class float. Now what is the meaning of this? Whenever the value contains no decimal point, it is int. Whenever the value contains uh, detect, uh, the decimal point, it is a float. Okay. This we have learned this type of fundamentals in mathematics also. It is not new to us. Okay. Now if suppose I want to print the value of m, so I'm going to write it down here. Print m. It is giving me m equal to 10. But after some time, if I say m equal to 45, okay, is it going to show me the value as 10 or it is going to value going to show me the value as 45 that we will have to see now. So for that, I'm going to write it down again, print m. And please keep it in mind, whenever I give this, okay, see, uh, Python is helping me by giving a help over here. So if I give here print, and then after that, if I wait for some time, okay, then it's going to give me the help that what am I supposed to type it down over here. So if I write down here print m, the value would be 45. What is the meaning of this? The value which was there at the beginning was 10 and now it is 45. So 45 has been overwritten by 10 because the recent value of m is 45. So in this manner, we understood how to store the value of uh, for any variable in Python. It is as simple as that. If suppose you compare it with some other programming language, like maybe Java or C, then it is very difficult uh, there because we have to understand what is the type, uh, whether it is integer or number, how to store it. Okay, all these things you don't have to worry over here. Python will take care of it. So that is as simple as that. I suppose it, is, it must be very easy for you to understand. So now, if I want to say that the value of m is 45, I understood the value of uh, n is 34. Okay, fine. I want to show here m plus n. Okay. And then if I write here print q, it's going to give me the value as 45 plus 34 as 79. So here I try to show the addition of the two numbers. So you must have come to know that it is really very easy whenever you want to add two numbers. And it is your simple program. And this particular type of program is something like it is, it is in a sequential manner. So whenever you are going to learn the programming, you are supposed to understand what is sequential programming, uh, what is conditional programming, and what is iteration okay so when you talk about the sequential the number of statements you are going to give one after another okay if you are going to give talk going to talk about the conditional there are conditions what do you mean by conditions for example if i want to say that uh, if the value of uh, say marks is greater than 30 someone is passed otherwise someone is failed so here I am talking about the condition. In the same manner, there is an iteration, but we will talk about it in the later part of the studies and in the later part of the tutorials. So this is all about giving the values, finding the data type, and adding the two numbers. So I suppose it must be really very easy for you. Thank you for listening. Hello again. So. We are onto uh, the Python and we have an idea that how to start with the Python. So I have already uh, opened my Python uh, screen and you can see here that uh, we can give idle and we can open it. Okay. So we are going to make use of Python 3.7 32 bit version. Fine. You can make use of 64 bit version or 32 bit version. Please keep it in mind when you talk about this Python 3.7, 3.7.3. So Python 3.7 is the version and 0.3 is the release. Okay. So as and when you, uh, the Python community 
or this free software foundation is going to get the new versions with few changes then they talk about the releases otherwise the newer version will come that is 3.8 and 3.8 is there in the market currently fine so by now uh, we know how high python is to be used and how to start uh, it is first learner's language also known as first learner's language later we started that uh, variables how to assign values to them uh, later we understood to find type so when i told you about the finding the type the meaning is uh, here actually it is known as a function this function is something like for 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 example if suppose someone is giving us a task to do some task okay and then that fellow or we ourselves do the particular task okay so whenever we execute that task then we uh, have did it we have done it successfully this is something like the function does so when you are the function you talk about the function is something like whenever we give it the chance to work it works in such a way that it gives us the output so here we have seen the two functions till now one is print okay and other is type they are known as the system defined functions of python okay so what are the what are they known as system defined functions and uh, they are nothing but print and type at this moment so we will see that what is type this type is a built in function which allows us to find out the data type so the meaning of the data type is something like the value whatever is entered so if i suppose enter the value as m equal to 10 okay and if i say print m it is going to print the value 10 over here but if i say type m it would be showing me class int the meaning is here it is it is storing the integer value okay so this is integer is one of the data type fine in the same manner if i give like how i had given over here p equal to 90.8 this is my percentage p for percentage so type p so class float so the percentage generally can be given with the decimal point in the same manner if i write it down a equal to name or if i write it down enter your name okay and if i write sorry type a it is going to show me class string so till now we have seen the three data types one is int other is float and third is str it is showing you class int class float class str so print is also one of the functions now we are going to talk about few arithmetic operators now uh, how actually we have talked about the arithmetic operator already for example when i took the value of m and n from the user i tried to add the two values m plus n so q equal to m plus n that was my one of the arithmetic oper operator that is plus okay so plus is one of the arithmetic operator in the same manner if i want to write it down say div equal to m minus n okay and if i write down here print div it is going to give me minus 24 because the thing is the value of m is 10 and n i don't know 34 so 24 minus 34 is minus 10 okay so it took the same values whatever i had given over here okay so print div so div is suppose something like the divide okay or minus here i would like to instead of this it would be better if i write down here sub equal to m n minus m let's try this and then if i give here please print sub it's going to give me the value as 10 so in this manner it is giving me in the same manner there are other functions there are other arithmetic operators and we can say we can see them in this manner for example uh mult equal to mult is for multiplication m into n print mult i can give the same i can see the value as 100 fine so m into n is something like i can see m is 10 and uh, what is the value of n i really don't know i'll have to check it just a minute i'll just check it so i'll just give print m print n sorry i gave it wrong print n i can see the value as 10 into m 10 into n it gave me mult equal to m into n print mult 
okay in the same manner i can do divide so it is possible by using div equal to m by n okay and i can print in the same manner there is two important uh, function uh, arithmetic operators are there they are nothing but for example if the value is m is 4 i want to give the newer values so these values will be overwritten okay what are the values were there at the beginning they were 10 but now it is 4 and if i give here suppose 2 okay and if i try uh, the mod there is this new type of uh, arithmetic operator m mod n okay and if i give here print mod it is giving me zero it is giving me zero because it looks for the remainder okay so here it is going to look for the remainder and obviously four divided by two it would be uh, two to the four and it would be zero but if i use uh, floor div it is floor division okay and if i write the double slash there's a, again another new operator in python more is there in all the programming languages but this floor division is there only in this particular python programming language and if i try to print uh, f l r d i v i can see too it gives me the quotient okay so please keep it in mind more gives you the remainder of this floor division the double slash okay it gives you the quotient in this manner we have learned today the arithmetic operators like plus minus multiplication division mod and floor division thank you very much i hope it must have been useful for you stay tuned hi again we will understand how to work with the relational and logical operators the relational operators always set up the relation between two variables and they are nothing but uh, greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to equal to equal to and not equal to so if suppose i want to find this out that uh, if whether m is greater than n or n is less than m so they are my variables i suppose by now it must be clear to you the variables are nothing but which are changing the values always which vary the values okay so which are variable in nature which are varied in nature so if i'm talking about say n equal to 5 and n equal to 6 this is known as assignment whenever you are giving some value to some variable okay it can be any variable whatever you say okay but it should not be the integers they should be the combination of the character and the numbers it should start with the character okay so this is they are this assignment so m equal to 5 and n equal to 6 so if i'm going to write it down uh, say print so print m greater than n and print m greater than n so m greater than n is false because the value of m is less than n so obviously m is not greater than n so the value is false so i can give it here for example m less than n true because 5 is less than 6 okay if i am writing it down here m equal to equal to n false because the value of m and n are different they are not same please understand the difference between single equal to and double equal to is single equal to is used for assignment so if i say p equal to 7 this assignment whenever i am writing it down m equal to equal to n the meaning is here i am comparing the values this is a relational operator okay so this is a relational operator okay in the same manner if i want to write it down m less than equal to n true okay now less than equal to is you might say that whether it is equal to uh, five, is 5 equal to 6 no but either of the operator should be true so either less than is true or equal to is true okay so less than is true because m is less than n 5 is less than 6 so either of the conditions should be true whenever we are using the relational operators okay so less than equal to there are the two conditions here m is less than n so it is giving true m equal to n is not same they are not same so it is false but it check either of the condition in the same manner if i say 
m greater than n false because m is not greater than n even m is not equal to n i can give it in this manner also for example if i want to give it something like this i can and i can change here the operator and i can print them so m equal to equal to n false now what is the meaning of this along with this it will be printed print would contain this would print this m equal to equal to n also and along with this it's output okay so in this manner the relational operators work now we are going to talk about the logical operators okay so the logical operators are and or not they are the logical operators but when i press enter over here it will give me an error you saw the error it is known as a syntax error syntax error means it is not understanding the syntax the method of writing down your statement so if suppose you want to type down something okay give hash at the beginning okay and this is nothing but the comment the meaning of the comment is you can give anything after that see now it didn't give me an error so the logical operators are and or not now if i say print m and n m and n it would give me 6 okay because it is going to take the later value but instead of that if we if i try it like something like this x equal to true and y equal to false now if i print x and y x and y okay one is true other is false so it would be false but if i give here print x or y it would be true because either of the x or y is true so either this is true or this is false so one of them is true so it is giving me true but the meaning of this true and false together would always be false so one true and one false is false Actually, they are known as the Boolean operators. We are talking about the Boolean operators. We are going to talk about them in the later part of the tutorials also. In the same manner, if I write it down here, t equal to true. t equal to true and y equal to false. Understand? When I gave capital true, it gave me an error because true is not allowed. Capital T is allowed. Capital F is allowed in the false and u equal to true now if i give print i'll just copy it from the top and i'll write it down t and y t and u at this moment so here it will be t and u now you can understand both are true so it is going to give me true. So here T and U are true. But if I write it down, T and Y, it will give me false. Okay. So this is something like the logical operators. We are working on the logical operators in such a way that either of the value is true and one is false, then it is false. Both the values are true. Then true. In the same manner, if I try, sorry, p equal to false. Now I will try it with respect to both false. So one is false and other is false. So y and p. So I'll write it down p and now you can see both are false. P is false. This is false. So it is giving me false. In the same manner, if I write it down print not p what is p currently false so not p 
it will give me true because p is false now not false with true so it is true in this manner we understood how to use the logical operators actually we are going to make use of this relational and logical operators in our programs in the later part of the study thank you very much stay tuned hi so we are going to learn the logical operators now so the logical operators are actually and or and not so i suppose you remember that i told you about the comment so and or not are the logical operators okay so this is a comment so it will not give me an error actually uh, what is this and so we'll just try to see the commands or the short programs which i have used at the on the top so here you can see say t equal to true okay so i'm going to give the values as true and false they are known as the boolean values so if i give here u equal to false okay and uh, if i write it down print t and u is i hope you understood now t and u are my variables okay and then i'm going to write it down t and u you can see here when either true or false is there it is false but when i have suppose uh, p is false q is false okay and when i say print p and q you can see here they are false so when two false are there it is false when two trues are there it is true when one is true and other is false then it is false okay when one is false and other is true then again false because one of them is false okay so in the same manner this can be given okay so in the same manner we are going to work with respect to and later on or later on not so here i am going to give here or you can see here because both of them are false but if suppose i give here or here also or then i can say it is true because either of the true or false is true so it is true okay but when there was and so what is the difference between and and or and is both the conditions have to be true and or is either of the condition has to be true so when either of the condition is true then it is uh, either it can be true or false whatever you are giving okay or false rather and if suppose it is both the conditions are true then it is giving it is it is giving you both are true so if i give here now p equal to true please keep it in mind you are not going to write down true t r u a like this it will give you an error you have to give true like this q equal to true fine and then when i give here print p and q you can see true in the same manner if i write print p or q okay so i'll make it and as or and again this one as or i can see here true so in both the ways it is because both the variables values are true so whether it is and or whether it is or it would be true because either of the condition is true okay so that is implicable for or okay now not it is really very easy print i'll have to give it in double quotes because i want to print it so not p and i'm going to write it down not p please keep it in mind the syntax goes like this with comma okay so not p p is true so it is false okay but if suppose i am saying uh say q equal to false fine if i am going to write it down not q so i have to make it as not q 
I'll have to make it as not Q. What would be the output? It would be true. Okay. So this ends false. Uh, it it this ends understanding true and false. This ends and or not. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. Okay, up till now, we have talked about writing down the program on the command prompt. So now we are going to write down about, we are going to understand the input output statements in Python and we are going to execute them in a sequential manner. Sequential is sequence, one after another. No condition, there is no condition at all. If b greater than zero, then what to do? I am not going to talk about it at this moment. It would be a sequential program, okay? So if suppose, I, I write it down something like this. Sorry. You can see here, this is started. I can give here the value as say c equal to 10. f equal to 45. If I write here c plus f, I can get 55. Okay. If suppose I say after some time f equal to c, what is the meaning of that? The value of c would be stored in f it is as simple as that in python how you do it in mathematics in other programming languages you have to write down few more statements for the same you have to give the data type but there is no need it understands by default okay it is as easy as that okay so now f equal to c so c is value is 10 and f would be 10 again so if i write again c plus f i, I should get 20 yes i got it so this is we used to do we are doing it on the uh, command prompt but now we are going to do it on the editor so file new file we have talked about it before okay i can write it down the program over here so again i'll say write down the same thing c equal to 10 a quick f equal to 23 print addition is c plus f right yeah but I have not given comma. It will give me an error later. Okay. It is going to execute the program sequentially. Okay. You can see here it is asking me for the file name. I will just write down the same. Okay. And then it is giving me addition is 33. Fine. So in this manner it is executing. But now if suppose I say that print c is c okay then it's going to give me the the print the c uh, this particular statement i added in between you can see here it is it is uh, python is helping you to give the syntax of print also can you see that okay so it is it is uh, that cooperative we can say right so you can give here okay you can see here c is 10 and it gave the addition fine but every time i can't give the constant values it is really not possible because every time how can i give c as always 10 and f as always 23 i want to give my own values so i'm going to write down here say a equal to it is a new syntax which i'm going to tell you int of input of input is a function again okay enter a okay now try will try to run please understand how is the syntax int of why int of because otherwise it takes character value string value auto uh, by default so input function is asking to enter the value of a which would be integer understood so here i am going to execute it please keep it in mind it is going to execute the code which has been given already okay because the thing is here this the statement is coming on the fifth line or the fourth line rather fifth line okay and the meaning is it is going to execute statement by statement line by line so i'm going to execute the same let's see what happens enter it is waiting for me okay so i entered the value as 46 but i didn't print it it didn't show me any output okay but i will i will say print a i can give print a or i can give print a is a anything whatever if you want to make your program more user friendly please give it in that manner make your program more user friendly because whoever is a third person will not come to know what do you want to say so always keep your program user friendly so now let's see what happens it's giving me it is asking you to enter the value of a now you must have understood 
Sometimes I'm giving 46, sometimes I'm giving 45, sometimes I'm giving 50. The meaning is here, they are, the values are not constant. I'm giving some new value. CA is 45. This program is really user friendly. Okay. In the same manner, if I give here B equal to in doc, input doc, enter B. And then if I say, sorry, print B is B. Okay. Later, I write C equal to A plus B. And later, I print sum is c it is as simple as that you can see here the original program will get executed you can see here the original program it is giving c is 10 f is 23 addition is 33 all these things it is giving and it is starting it is starting execution later so it is running statement by statement okay so i gave here 45 sorry I gave here 23 and then it is giving me addition. So it is running the program. Did you all get it? So in this manner, we can write down a simpler program in our Python. Now, if I want to add a new program, file new, okay, I can write down area of circle. And we know the formula for the area of circle is pi r square. Okay. So obviously, pi is not there any anywhere on the keyboard so i can't type it down i'll have to keep some variable for it i and it is constant so it is 3.14 okay r i don't know I, I want to take it from the user i can give r as 2 okay and then i can say a equal to pi r as 2 a equal to pi into r into r pi r square and i want to print so print a a please understand here if i write down here a it will give me an error let's see whether it gives me an error or not see it gave me an error a is not defined because there is a difference between small a and capital a i have given here capital a i have to give here again a capital a okay so run run module Okay, you can see here 12.56 is the area of circle. Now, I want to make it more user friendly. So here, I am going to write it down. Int of input of enter r. Okay, now the value is not constant. I am going to Take it from the user area is fine now it will be more user friendly it will be more uh, understandable by anybody who is a third person and the programmer also radius is 5 it is giving me area is 78.5 so in this manner we can execute the programs it is really very easy thank you very much for watching this tutorial stay tuned thank you yeah hi we will continue with the input of the statement so we will write down the one or two more programs and then later uh, we will start with the conditional statements so you know how to write down a program so we'll write down a program to say calculate the simple interest okay now for calculating simple interest what is the formula we should know so i'll I, I think you remember that whenever we are giving any comment, we are giving it something like this si equal to p into n into r into r divided by 100. Okay, please keep it in mind. It is really very important to give the proper brackets. Okay, we will understand this. So p into n into r divided by 100. Okay, so this is my simple interest formula. Okay. So when I talk about this, okay, so how to find out the variables? Is SI is variable? No, SI would be output, output value. So SI, in my SI, the output would come. What is the variable? 100 is the variable, no, 100 is a constant, okay? What is P? Yes, it is a variable, principal amount, N, number of years, R, rate. So I'm going to take the values from the user either i can give it like this 
let's say this a equal to number of years 2 r is 2.3 and i can calculate directly i will copy it okay paste it over here but without comment and i will say print si as simple as that the program is really very easy python is actually very easy to understand okay that's why it is known as the first learners programming language so here you can see f4 underscore si okay please give the program names properly uh, they should be user friendly they should be understandable by looking at the program name what is it all about okay it should not be the program it should not be abc or xyz that should not be the program and you will not come to know tomorrow or maybe after say one month where, where you if you want to search for some program and if you don't come to know then you will come to know from that name okay i'm going to execute it see i got the output okay so here it is possible but in addition to that if i want to take the values from the user i will write it down int of input of enter principal amount and why two brackets because there is one bracket over here one bracket over here so to complete we should have the two more brackets okay then n n is number of years now n can be 2.3 years 3.5 years so it would be float of float is another data type okay we have talked about it when we learned about type function what do you mean by function function is the task which is given to the programming language to execute okay so here input is one of the function float is one of the function int is one of the function type was one of the function print is one of the functions so how many functions we have learned till now print input type int float so around five functions we have learned till now so here uh, p sorry here i should write n i can write b that is not a problem but it is you it should be user friendly so one should come to know n is number of years so number of years r again r can, can be uh, the rate and the rate is again uh, can be in decimal point and whenever you are giving something in decimal point it can be a normal number also without decimal point so it, it will take it as say if you enter 2 then 2.0 if it is float if you enter 2.3 it will take it as 2.3 but if you give int it will give 2 point instead of 2.3 it will take 2 okay so understand why to use float so enter R that is rate okay we will make it proper sorry and we are going to execute it in this manner and we are going to run it so p s i equal to p into n into r divided by this and we will execute it can you see here okay and we can see it out over here it is giving me an error let's see why it is giving me an error because i have to open it i closed it by mistake because we had done some mistake we have not given here double quotes okay let's see again Run it. You can see here five thousand four five. It gave it out fine. So this okay. So I'll write down the code over here. Let me adjust the position. Uh, now I can see here. I have written it something like this. Uh, please keep it in mind. I'm not supposed to write down like this. As soon as I write down bigger than A, it will come to the next line with one tab of space because this is the indentation. The meaning of the indentation is I should come to know uh, this facility has been given by Python programming that uh, automatically that you should come to know that which statement is a part of this particular one, but the other condition. So here it is used in such a way that 
a equal to 233 and b equal to 500 if b greater than a obviously b is greater than a you can see so b is greater than a so let's execute this particular program i'll save it as uh, say python and uh, sorry i'll give the name as pi 11 because it was already there so i am expecting that yes b is greater than a fine so you can see here b is greater than a i i have written it down something like this uh, now what is happening over here uh, i am talking about this particular condition in such a way that a equal to 233 and uh, b equal to 500 and it is trying to execute the same thing b is greater than a but if suppose i write it down like this a greater than b okay is a greater than b no it is not because here a is 233 and b is 500 so i'll try to execute it it is not giving me any output okay in the same manner if suppose i write it down something like this uh, i can uh, not only if condition I, I i'm not supposed to write down i can write down some other condition also so the thing is something like this a equal to 233 b equal to 500 if b greater than a b is greater than a elif now what is the meaning of this if this doesn't happen how i gave you the uh, example in the last uh, tutorial that the meaning is if shall i go for this particular course or i shall i go for this particular course so, there, so if there are two good courses on udemy and i want to go for one of the course i will decide it by asking others i would search it on the internet and i'll choose one what is the meaning of that here i'm comparing which one would be better okay here also if b greater than a i'm comparing whether b greater than a if not elif a equal to equal to b the meaning is if this is not going to get executed then this will get executed what is the meaning of this this will get executed if it is true fine it will stop but if it is not uh, if it is not going to get executed then elif would get executed so now we will try to execute it obviously b is greater than a so the first condition would be fulfilled and it would be we will be seeing b is greater than a it is getting executed see b is greater than a now i'll change it in such a way that a here and b here what is the meaning if a greater than b obviously i know a is not greater than b 233 is not greater than 500 233 is less than 500 it should come to the later condition let's see whether it comes to the later condition or not or what happens it is not giving me anything why is it like that because a equal to equal to b the meaning of a equal to equal to b is whether the value of a and b are similar obviously they are not now i'll change the value okay and i'll try to execute i will come to know that a and b are equal will be printed okay so that is the idea behind be giving if and elif okay so if the condition in the if is not get is not true then it would be printing the elif part so we can obviously write down the else part also what is the meaning of this here you can see a equal to 500 b equal to 233 if b greater than a b is greater than a elif if the values are same then a and b are equal else print a is greater than b so now let's see whether this gets executed or not so what do you think what would be executed if if b greater than a is 233 greater than 500 no this will not be printed later on you know, it will come to this particular condition is a equal to equal to b is 500 equal to 233 no it is they are not same so it should come to the last statement let's see what happens whether it prints a greater than b or not yes it's printing a greater than b the meaning is here uh, this condition is not fulfilled so it will go for this if this is not fulfilled it went for this fine so what is the syntax if elif else you can give only one if and only one ls okay at this moment unless uh, until I teach you uh, the nested if. So, we are not talking about the nested if. The meaning of the nested if is if inside if. I am not talking about that. It is normal if. Okay. Singular if. 
So there can be only one if, there can be only one else, there can be many more ellipses. We will talk about this in the next tutorial. Stay tuned and uh, do give me the feedback whether you understood or not and any other one. Thank you very much for watching. Hi again. So we are going to talk about the conditional statements now. Uh, I hope you remember that we had talked about the sequential uh, statements. The sequential statements are like when we write it down one after another. They are the sequential statements. So it's something like if suppose I write it down a equal to 5 and then uh, say b equal to 7. Sorry. So b equal to 7. Okay. b equal to 8. Okay. Then uh, I'm going to write it down here. Say print a uh, later on say print b. Okay, something like that. Uh, the meaning is it is I've written the number of statements one after another. Fine. And I'm going to uh, execute them. And please keep it in mind there is an interpreter. So what does the interpreter do? Uh, it executes the statements line by line in such a way that if there is an error in either of the statements or uh, in a sequence, wherever it gets an error, it verifies it stops there to tell the user that uh make the correct statement and write down the rewrite the program or edit the program something like that so that is the idea behind it please keep it in mind so that is an interpreter over here so we are going to talk about say if suppose i write it down uh print sorry uh say a greater than b i don't know whether a is greater than b or not uh, a is 9 and B is 5. No, A is not greater than 5. Uh, five, uh, 5 is not greater than uh, 9. Okay. But still, I am going to check it in such a way that whether A greater than B. Okay. And it is giving me false because uh, 5 and 8, there is a difference. So when I talk about 5, 5 is lesser and 8 is greater. So 5 is uh, greater than 8. No, it is false. So here, this is the uh, program. And this is a condition which has been written with the relational operators. The same relational operators, I'm going to execute them. I'm going to write them in the program. Okay. So it would be something like the relational operators I'm going to make use of. So if I write it down here, a equal to 5 and b equal to 8. So I'm going to check if a greater than b. Okay. And then print a. Or uh, I can write it down. Uh, it is lesser. Okay. And then I will execute it. I'll let you know what is the meaning of it. Don't worry. So here it's going to give me. I'll give the name as say. Uh, pi 10. Okay. So it, I can send it to you. So here you can see that. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is not giving me any output. Because the thing is. Here it is checking whether it is greater or not. So if a greater than b, obviously a is not greater than b over here. Can you say a is greater than b? No, not at all. So if I change this particular condition, okay, it didn't give me any output. You must have seen that. See here, there is no output. Only it, it gave me restart. Okay, no output. But here, if I change the condition in such a way that b greater than a, and now if I uh, execute it, run it, then I'll come to know. Uh, that just a minute I'll just make my window bigger and I'll let you know see you can see here something is lesser B is lesser or A is lesser or it is lesser okay so it is giving me the correct output but there was no output before what is the meaning of this when you talk about this particular program here what is happening it is checking the condition now what is the meaning of this this is known as I'm talking about the conditions okay and what do you mean by the conditions for example if suppose you want to go for a certain course and you are deciding whether i should go for this course or i should not go for this course so obviously you ask your friends you ask or you might try to find out about that course on internet and then you decide whether yes i'll go ahead or i'll not go ahead what is the meaning of that if this is good then i will go ahead otherwise i will not go ahead with this course that is the meaning behind it Okay, so whenever you are talking about this here, the meaning is it is talking to you in such a way that it is telling you that yes, the program is runnable and it is executing this particular condition. So this is known as a condition over here. Fine. 
so they are the conditions and now i have given the values over here i have given the condition if is to be used if is the keyword okay these keywords are something like in float print they are all keywords okay you please don't use these as the program names you will get an error okay your program names should be something which is you which you can understand by looking at them i have talked to you all about the variable names program names what they should be and how they should be please refer to my previous lectures for the same so if b greater than a the condition would be checked the value of 8 greater than 5 yes true it is true it is going to print this and it printed this it is lesser okay so this is happening in this manner but it was not when i had given a greater than b fine now what is this colon this colon is known as the indentation it is it is allowing us to do the indentation what is the meaning of the indentation whenever you write down the program there has to be an indentation properly in such a way that this is my if condition the if condition would be something like this in such a way that if suppose i write it down the if condition something like this okay a equal to 233 b equal to 500 if b greater than a so this particular condition i can have some other condition also in such a way that here if i want to give one more condition say if a greater than b fine and then i am going to print it yes print uh what a greater than b okay i want to find it out very easily that this particular statement is for this one and this particular statement is for this one so for this there is an indentation in case of python by giving colon in case of other programming languages it is given by using the uh, brace curly brace if you have done c programming language okay then it does it by using the curly braces okay in java also the same thing so in this manner the if condition is executed and we can uh, uh, understand that the if condition is going to get executed when either of the condition is true otherwise it will be false we will learn about it in the next tutorial thank you very much for watching it hi again so last time we had talked about the if else condition and uh, if elif else condition we had seen and even i had sent the notes i suppose you must have seen them and you must have tried them uh, please uh, if possible you please give me the feedback about uh, my tutorials so the meaning is using the if else or if elif else condition uh, it is used to understand to choose a correct condition between if or elif otherwise else part so if either of the condition for example i had given you uh, the example yesterday if you want to take up a course on udb and you have seen two to three courses so you would have always a doubt that whether i should go for this course or that course or some other course so you ask few people you ask your friends and then you decide one so either of the course you go for so there we talk about the if condition either of the condition would get true okay so we are going to execute it with respect to the logical operators okay so it's something like the logical operators are nothing but uh, uh, for example if i want to say the logical operators i want to use so uh, the logical operators are uh, i suppose you must remember and or and not okay so it's something like we had executed the condition something like this if a greater than b okay we had written something like this print a else and we had written it in the program uh, the window okay so obviously it is not going to get executed over here and it is giving me unindented because i had not given colon etc etc so i'm supposed to write it down here in the file and new file and i'm going to write down the program here but i don't want to write it down over here at this moment so we are going to talk about the logical operators and the logical operators are something like whenever i want to give if for example say if a greater than b then a is greater okay and uh, if uh, say uh, b greater than a then b is greater but if i want to check within the three within three operands whether a is greater than b whether a is greater than c then a would be a would be greater if b is greater than a b is greater than c then b is greater otherwise c is greater so if i want to execute this in this manner okay 
then that time here we are going to talk about the with respect to the and condition i am going to write so it would be something like this uh maybe i can write down something like this uh, if a greater than b and uh, c greater than a then both the conditions are true so something like this obviously so i am going to write them down and then i am going to check them in such a way that whether it is executable or not so obviously i'll have to check this so instead of this uh, i'll have to obviously add copy it in the uh notepad file so i'm copying it and then i am going to write it down in this manner okay it is correct so it is going to automatically indent okay so here i will give some values to a i suppose you must be remembering that how to take the values from the user so we take them by using int of input of okay so we had done them in one of the tutorial please uh, go through the uh, last tutorials and you will come to know now a greater than b is a greater than b a greater than b yes and c greater than a is c greater than a yes both conditions are true okay so here the and condition please keep it in mind the meaning of the and is okay the meaning of the and is both the conditions are true then only it will get executed if either of the condition is true it will not get executed so let's see what is output so i'm executing it I will have to give some program name. So I'll be writing it down here. Pi. I have add reach till 12. So 13. Or I'll write down pi 12 because I have to send it to you all. Okay. So the both the conditions are true. But suppose if I write it down here or I have not changed the values. So if either of the condition is true, then only it is going to get executed. So if suppose a greater than b, is it is a greater than b? Yes. Or c greater than a. So it is not going to check whether c is greater than a or not. I'll make it as true. Now is 2 greater than 8? No, not at all. Okay. But still this will get executed because either of the condition is getting executed. Both the conditions are true. Okay. It didn't give me an error. What is the difference between this and and or? and allows us to execute both the conditions or allows us to execute either of the condition if either of the condition is true it will give me an output if both the conditions are true then it will give me an output if and is used so that is about the relational uh, operators along with the logical operators uh, now obviously uh, i'll just give here uh, as 12 2 because it is with respect to or fine now i'll open the new program and i'll try to execute it uh, now there is one more thing that is if and uh, there is if inside another if the meaning is this is known as the nested if okay i'll give the comment over here for that with the comments are made so this is nested if x equal to 50 if x greater than 40 above 40 if now see there are two ifs yesterday also i told you that there, there would be one if and one else always but unless you use the nested if uh, you will have only one if otherwise there can be two ifs or there can be few ifs if you want to give a an if condition inside another if condition the how the nest how the bird is there in the nest okay the same manner this next if condition is inside this nest okay so x equal to 50 if x greater than 40 print above 40 if x greater than 20 print above 20 else print not above 20 okay so here uh, let's see what happens so i'll execute it and i'll write it down I'll change the program name. It's giving me above 40 and above 20. Now, what is the meaning of it? Okay. Here, x equal to 50. Yeah. x greater than 40. 50 is greater than 40. Yes. True. Is 50 greater than 20? Yes. That is also true. 
so both the conditions have been executed so here we are talking about the nested if and please keep it in mind this else is a part of this if okay for that here the indentation is very important but if suppose i want to give one more else okay this else would be the part of this particular if so for that the indentation is required here you can see they are in one level okay you can see here one level so this else is a part of this if this else is the part of this if else print uh, say below 40 okay but as both the conditions are uh, x equal to 50 that is also with respect to x greater than 40 is true x greater than 20 is also true so it is going to give me but suppose if i give here 15 the 14 okay let's see what happens can you see below 40 what is the meaning because here i'm talking about uh, the 14 so 14 less greater than 40 or 14 greater than 20 no the conditions are not true it, it went to the uh, last uh, print after else and it it printed that so that's all about the if condition i suppose you must have understood you please execute them uh, do watch my tutorials uh, thank you very much i would be happy if you give the feedback okay now in this tutorial we are going to talk about the uh, loops okay and uh, this tutorial is uh, going to tell you about what are the loops how to write them down but we will talk about the various constructs first and we will just revise it in a faster manner so they are sequential conditional and iterations so sequential are the one one the they are the ones which are written one after another with no condition with no loop okay conditionals are nothing but the conditions in the last time tutorial we have talked about the if condition then it can be nested if it can be if elif else etc now we are going to talk about the iterations the iterations are the ones which are asking you or which are allowing you to execute it again and again so for example if i want to print the numbers from say 1 to 10 it's something like this for example, I want to print it at 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. Okay, what is happening over here? Every time it is adding the number 1 to that particular previous number. So it would be 1 plus 1 is 2, then 2 plus 1 is 3, then 3 plus 1 is 4, then 4 plus 1 is 5. What is happening here? Every time it is adding 1 to previous number okay so here this process is fast again and again happening the same thing okay so whenever we are talking about the the operand okay that particular operand is val the its value for say it is i okay then i equal to i plus one fine so if we want to print from 1 to 10 then add every time to the previous number so it would be 0 later it would be 1 later it would be 2 so every time it's adding 1 to the previous number and then would go up to 10 so whenever we want to execute it in such a way that again and again we want to execute the same steps same step of i go to i plus 1 it would be printed like that now here we will just understand what is this while loop first so i equal to 1 i is any variable it can be j it can be k it i have decided i have assigned one value to it while i greater than 6 is 1 greater than 6 no not at all it will not go inside the loop let's see what happens it it will not go inside the loop it will not print anything so it didn't print anything okay but suppose here what is happening exactly why while i greater than six it's a colon the meaning of the colon is indentation and then inside this while this print of i and i equal to i plus one is written now i'll just make the changes i'll write it down i laser equal to six what is the meaning over here while i equal to sorry i equal to one while one less than equal to six is the meaning is is one less than equal to six yes very much one is less than six print i 
What is the i here at this moment? 1. What is the value of i? 1. Okay. Here it will be 1. Fine. Then i equal to i plus 1. What is i? 1. So here i equal to 1 plus, sorry, 1 plus 1 equal to 2. Now we will go back. Sorry. It will go back. It will check 2 less than equal to 6. Yes, 2 is still less than 6. So it will be 2. Okay. Then here it will be 2 plus 1 equal to 3. Later it will again go back. Okay. This is 3. Fine. 3 less than equal to 6. Yes. 3 would be printed. And 3 plus 1 would be 4. In this manner, it will go to while i is equal to 6. While e is allowing you to iterate to execute the same step again and again till the condition is fulfilled. What is the condition? i less than equal to 6. Here it would be 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay. Then it would be 5. Is 5 less than 6? Sorry. Is 5 less than 6? Yes, very much. So, 5 plus 1 equal to 6. Fine. Now, is 6 less than 6? No, 6 is not less than 6. But is 6 equal to 6? Yes, 6 is equal to 6. So, 6 would be printed. 6 plus 1 would happen 7. But it will 7 less than each. 7 less than equal to 6? No, it will come out. Okay. So, obviously, it will uh, not allow me to execute. This is known as a dry run. Okay. So, this particular dry run is very important. Uh, sorry, I'll just cut it. And I'll write down here i equal to i plus 1. I'll set it with notes to you. Now, let's execute the program. Can you see here? In the same manner, the values are printed. So, here it is going to show me uh, the values, something like this. Okay. So, this is about the while loop. And uh, in the next tutorial, we will talk about the for loop. So, you can write down the program uh, to say uh, print... Uh, the simple interest for five times, uh, print area of triangle for five, four times, okay? And you are going to take some initial variable as i or j, and you are going to write it down, j equal laser equal to five or i laser equal to four, and then you are going to execute the same steps again. Thank you very much. Keep watching. Give me the feedback. Stay tuned. Hi. So, you must be knowing that uh, we are using actually the idle. Uh, idle as an interpreter and it is nothing but integrated development learning environment okay so obviously now we are going to make use of the jupyter notebook okay and this jupyter notebook says that uh, it is a powerful way to write and iterate on your python code for data analysis so uh, once you learn python properly obviously you would be learning the data analysis rather than writing and rewriting an entire program you can write lines of code and run them one at a time Actually, this was the uh, feedback or the, we can say, the response given by one of the participant that I should show instead of idle some other, uh, some other type of uh, actually the um, interpreter, okay? So, obviously, I'm going to make use of, I'm going to show it to you in such a way that we can edit and rerun the program again and all in the same window. So, it is going to happen in such a way that uh, we will have to install that first. So, how to install by using pip, okay? So, understand what is this pip now? Because we are going to make use of this pip later for the MySQL connection and all. So, pip is nothing but the Python package installer and we have to open the command window, fine? So, this command window has been opened and you can see here that uh, this pip install Jupyter lab has been this command has been given now what is this pip i'll just let you know in short in very short rather okay when we work on python okay uh, we can see here the programs getting saved in save as this 
by default python 37 32 because this is my 3.7 directory okay so in the same manner there is a scripts okay and under scripts you can see uh, if i give here all files uh, you can see here actually pip i'll just show you just a minute uh, you can see here pip okay and this pip get get installed from here so if suppose you want to open this fine uh, you can press here command okay and uh, right here cd this and you can try pip over here you'll get the uh, the commands related to the pip okay it will show you in in one minute yeah it has shown and now you can give this particular command uh, which i have given already and i have all these things already in my machine i have done it already by using pip install jupyter lab jupyter lab is the command okay it is going to collect all the libraries related to jupyter lab and then it is going to install and once it is installed how to start you have to understand so for starting you must have seen here i have given after it gives you that this is done running uh, uh, the jupyter lab uh, it is installed everything and then after that you can see uh, jupyter notebook you have to write it down with respect to jupyter notebook okay and once you open the jupyter notebook it would be opening uh, this as the jupyter notebook you can see it over here fine so you can see the jupyter notebook okay you can see the jupyter notebook and then you can click on python 3 once you open that you can get, get the command over here for example there's a command window at this moment there's my command prompt you can assume how you, we used to get it you can give here say x equal to uh, five y equal to say seven the x and my, y and my variables okay and then i want to print it say x plus y it is going to give me uh, in the same window in such a way that if i run i'll get down okay so in this manner we have understood how to make use of jupyter notebook and i would like to tell you that where does the file get stored it is going to save the file over here okay so you can see here uh, this is the and here i can see the file has been saved so if suppose i save this file save as and i give here third say uh notebook okay i'll save you can see it over here the third file has also been saved fine so this is the idea behind jupyter notebook obviously i'm going to teach you from the idle only because for the beginner this is a program for the beginner this is a tutorial for beginner so it will be easier for you to learn something in idle but if suppose you want to make use of jupyter notebook just i gave you an idea so that is all about the jupyter notebook and every what whatever the information i have told you this is all present uh, in this particular uh, notepad file which i am going to share with you okay so this is the idea behind the jupyter notebook and uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, listening to this particular tutorial and uh, stay tuned okay hi so we are going to talk about the for loop now uh, obviously in the last tutorial we have talked about the uh, jupyter notebook and uh, i have told you how you can use it instead of idle okay uh, but i have told you that i'm going to make use of idle only because this program is only for beginners uh and whoever has an, has an idea about uh, python already uh maybe they might feel that uh, it is for the begin beginners level and obviously it is for the beginners level so obviously if suppose you don't know python then it would be really fruitful for you that's that's what i've told you in the in the uh, introduction of my course also so yeah fine so a for loop is something like we are going to talk about and we have talked about the while loop uh, yesterday uh, in the, in the last tutorial so for loop is something like which is allow allowing us to iterate again i've told you about the uh, three things uh, the sequence selection and the iteration and the meaning is whenever you are going to write down the number of things in a sequential manner okay without any condition then that time it's a sequence sequence otherwise if there are conditions like if condition okay we have talked about if else 
or we have talked about if elif else we have talked about nested if okay we have done the uh, programs on the same and i have told you that particular concept so uh, we are going to talk about the uh, for loop now in the iteration okay so this is another loop than uh, in addition to while okay so we have not uh, learned yet the list tuple or dictionary so we are not going to execute it on a list tuple or dictionary but i'll let you know in the next next tutorial about uh, the list or the tuple and then we will again make use of for loop on the basis of that so loop looping through a string even strings are the iterable objects so if suppose i am saying uh, x equal to computer okay and if i write here print x obviously i'm going to write get computer at a stretch but the thing is if i want to show uh, the character by character okay then how it would be so i'm going to write it down in the program <clears throat> okay in such a way that i'm going to write it down say this and instead of this banana, I'm going to, if suppose I write down computer because we have taken this particular uh, example. So let's see that. Fine. You please understand that whenever you are going to type it down from somewhere else, okay, after colon, okay, you, and you press enter in such a way that it would indent, it would make the indentation automatically. Now I'm going to execute it. Okay, and then I would write, say, and I can see here it has read the word computer in a character by character format. Okay, so what is happening here? It is trying to, for x, x is nothing but a variable, any variable you can take, you can take y, you can take z, you can take i, for i in computer, so it is going to, and print i okay the meaning is it is going to read it in such a way that first c in the next iteration o in the next iteration m in the next iteration p in this manner it will go up to r okay so in this manner it reads the character by character input whatever has been passed with respect to this x now please keep it in mind uh, the for loop which is there in the c programming okay it is a bit different you have to give the initial value you have to give the last value and then you can increment or decrement it is going to auto increment okay it is going to go in in while loop also you must be remembering in the while loop we had written something like this while uh, i uh, less than equal to six sorry okay print i and then we had given i plus equal to one they are the this is known as a shortcut shortcut for arithmetic operators okay the meaning is here i equal to i plus one you can do this with respect to i into equal to two suppose so it would be i equal to i uh, into two something like this so obviously this i'm not telling you but we can give here i equal to i plus one or i can give here i equal to i plus one or i can give here i plus equal to one the meaning is same okay this shorthand or shortcut for the arithmetic operators how we are using them so what was happening over here while i is equal to six print i and i equal to i plus one this giving I, I equal to i plus one is very much necessary otherwise our program will go into infinite loop okay if suppose you have not given increment or decrement properly fine but that is not the case uh, with respect to uh, this for loop because it automatically takes the character by character and you don't need to increment so this is the idea behind the for loop and uh, obviously if suppose i want to print the first five numbers uh, why i'm saying five you'll come to know that okay it's going to execute it in this manner i'll have to save the program i'll give some program name please keep it in mind don't give the program name like for dot pi int dot pi or maybe say while dot pi because it will give you an error your 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 uh, idle or your program won't get started 
because it is seeing the keyword is used as a, a file name so give it along with that say one or two so here you can see it is going to show me zero to five because it starts it is starting from zero it will take one number less one number behind it will come up to because it starts from zero and obviously when you talk about it starts from zero and six numbers so here it is one then two then three four five and six in this manner the six numbers have been shown okay here range operator has been used which is there in the for loop again we are not making use of any increment or decrement and the meaning is it is i want it to start from zero by default it will go up to the one number lesser than whatever the number has been provided provided so this is all about for loop and in this manner we have learned the second type of iteration that is a for loop thank you very much stay tuned Hi, actually I'm going to uh, present uh, the video in terms of the pres PowerPoint presentation. I have to cover a lot of topics today uh, because probably it would be a last lecture or the tutorial we can say. Uh, according to Udemy uh, guidelines, if it is a free lecture, then I have to complete it within two hours. So we are going to learn list functions, tkinter and MySQL connectivity. Uh, so let's start with the list. Okay, so let's start with the list. Lists are the most versatile data type. And you can see here that I have given a list over here as an example. They allow to store various elements of various data types. Actually, it is quite resembling with respect to the C or Java uh, programming arrays. But then when you talk about the arrays, you can't give the multiple data types in one array. Uh, but that is not the case over here. You can give multiple data types elements over here. A list contains items separated by comma, and uh, obviously we can use the slice operator that is colon. Okay, so this is list one. Obviously, I'm going to uh, send you all the programs. I'm going to show you the programs, and uh, you can have a look over there, and you can run them at your terminal. So list one equal to say A B C D, and uh, we uh, it is A B C D seven sixty five and one point forty four two etc. Elements are there. And when I print list of zero, okay, it is given, it is something like this list of zero or list of one, something like that. So it starts from zero, it is one, it is two, it is three, it is four. So it would be showing me A, B, C, D. But if I give list one, one, two, three, then it would be obviously zero, one. So one, two, three, so one and two, okay, it will take one element prior. In the same manner, two onwards two colon onwards so it would be third onwards so zero one two so here it would be 1.42 johnny and 56.3 etc it is going to show you the number of elements here you can see i'm doubling the list i'm copying the list with the same number of items again and again so you can see here my list is getting the first list getting over over here and i can see the next list so this is all about the list okay uh, you can see the list we can understand the list with the for loop also so you can see here list 13579 and we know the for loop very well. We have executed the for loop. It is known as the iterative uh, conditions whenever we give or iter iterative statements we give. We talk about the for loop and the while loop. We have studied that already. So please uh, watch the previous videos for the same. So for I in list, print I. So it is going to print me 13579 one after another. We had done the same type of example with respect to the string if you remember here another list has been given uh, giving python c and java and i want to print it with in this list so this list is my variable okay and i have given the list in this particular manner okay so and then print x so here it is going it, it doesn't need any increment or decrement operator that i have told you it is going to take the element by element so this is all about the list now we are going to talk about the functions the functions are nothing but there are two types of functions standard library and user defined standard library functions we have already seen print input int of so in the same manner we are going to make use of the other functions which are written by the user they are known as a user defined function a function is a block of code which runs when it is called we have to call that particular function in the same manner print also we we had called that's why it was getting executed you can see here print but it was called okay so in the same manner here also we have to call our function you can pass data 
known as parameters into a function a function can return the data as a result so i have given here two functions we can see here the function definition whenever you define a function with def okay def is the keyword and after function you can see the colon after function you can see the colon and after that automatically it would be uh, indented so def my function this function has been def defined over here and from here it has been called so whatever the function you are writing it is a function name okay so this particular function name is supposed to be written with respect to the parenthesis and it can be called again wherever you are going to call it this would get executed it will show you show me hello from a function in the same manner here i have written one more function that is my add okay here it is adding two numbers can you see that okay sum equal to n1 plus n2 but where are n1 and n2 n1 and n2 are called over here with between sorry with respect to a and b okay so a is n1 b is n2 it is asking to enter the first number and the second number respectively then this particular function has called as, to, as soon as it is called the cursor or the control will go to this it will execute this okay the data would be in sum it would be returned and that c would be nothing but sum it would be printed this is function calling and this is function definition so this is about the function later on we are going to talk about the tick inter programming it is actually python standard gui uh, graphical user interface package there are a lot of things actually to be learnt in tick inter so if i take this particular uh, tutorial uh, this particular syllabus again uh, in the next course then i would be explaining tick inter properly with widget by widget explanation it is the most commonly used toolkit for gui programming in python so it is written as from tick inter import star so tick inter is a library it is it is asking us to import all the functions which are there so there are functions for label for the list box for the uh, entry that is the text box combo combo box button etc so window equal to tk and then here i can see window dot title so i want to print the title as welcome to tick inter programming in python and this is my loop main loop which would get over if you don't give this then also your program will run in the same manner you can see another program from tick inter import star windows equal window equal to tk tk is a function which is uh, or the method which is nothing but allowing us to make use of the libraries of tkinter and windows dot title window dot geometry is very important for geometry coordinates and lbl equal to label i am giving over here label it's a num it's one of the widget which is given which is used to give the title and this is grid is nothing but where we can see here that this particular grid is allowing us to keep that label at certain position okay so you can see here uh, i have given here the explanation okay so you can see here the three methods pack grid and place they are the geometry managers they allow us to keep the widgets at that particular place okay so you can learn them actually in depth so that's what i said if i take this course again i would be in a position to tell you about the tick inter properly with two to three tutorials and by telling you about the various programs uh, and then the for finally mysql connectivity so it allows you to get connected to the python programming language we have to use import mysql db or import pymysql dot cursors okay it is used with respect to it is installed we have to install it with respect to pip so i suppose you remember we had uh, uh, executed we have we had installed uh, jupyter notebook by using pip on the command prompt so pip install pymysql and then we can write down the program to connect to mysql and then i want it to print for me that it is connected if it is giving me an error it will give me an error it, i'll come to know there is an error okay i have to give db dot cursor because the thing is it is temporary memory area where the data is getting taken fetched 
cursor dot execute i am executing this particular query for this you should know a bit of sql okay data equal to cursor dot fetch all i want to fetch all the records from that new table which is there in the test database and then print it so uh, in this manner we have learned uh, about the four topics list functions uh, tkinter programming and mysql uh, thank you very much for the feedbacks and uh, thank you very much for watching my all tutorials so probably this would be my last tutorial on this thank you very much